my name's Adam from Vector3D, designer of the VLMP Pro, and welcome to this assembly guide. Firstly, we'll look at everything that's in the box and the tools that you'll need in order to complete the assembly, and then we'll go straight into the assembly process. The first thing you should find in the box is this card, which thanks you for your purchase and gives you more information on where to find additional things like the assembly guide in PDF format and things like that. Also, we have the soldering iron, the aluminium base plate, two stainless steel linear rails, a 2040 extrusion, a bag of hardware pieces, the counterweights, and 3D printed parts. To complete the assembly, you'll also need a 2.5 and 3mm hex driver, potentially some tweezers, although these are optional, scissors for opening the linear rail bags, side cutters for cutting zip ties, and some light lubricating oil. I'm going to start by sorting all the hardware, just to help you see what's going on and what I'm using as we go. Start off by taking the arm and grip and attaching the two together with two M3 by 8mm screws. Once they're together, just place to one side. Next, take the two sides of the counterweight holder and screw them together using three M3 by 20 millimeter screws. For now, don't put them in fully as we'll need some wiggle room for later. Once assembled, just place it to one side. To assemble the idler, start by pressing the M5 nuts into the back. Then assemble the idler stack by using the screw, then the washer, then the two flange bearings with the flanges pointing outwards, and then you can screw that stack into place. Repeat, just the same for the second stack. Once the screws are tightened, make sure that the idlers still spin freely. Back them off a little bit, if not. Once assembled, just place it to one side. For the base plate, you just need to press the five feet onto the base. They're self-adhesive, so just make sure you apply some pressure to ensure that they're stuck down. You need to place one in each corner and one just off centre towards the two screw holes. Make sure you're still about 15 to 20 millimetres from the nearest screw hole. Once they're assembled, just place it to one side. To assemble the two end stops, push the thumb screw through the hole and attach the sliding nut on the other side. Make sure you don't tighten this down as you'll need plenty of flexibility to be able to slide the nut onto the extrusion in a moment. Once assembled, just place them to one side. Next, we move on to the two linear rails. These are made of stainless steel, so they shouldn't have really any lubricant on when you get them out the bag. So they're nice and clean and easy to work with. All you need to do is place a screw through the holes and secure the M3 hammer nut on the other side. You only want to put this in a couple of rotations as again you'll need plenty of wiggle room to ensure you can install it onto the extrusion later. The way we install these is the first screw comes immediately after the rubber end stop which you should keep in place and then you leave a gap of two and then do another screw. Once you're done installing all the screws on a linear rail, I'd suggest adding some light oil in the gap on each side, as well as down the rail channel. This will get you some lubricant within the rail, and then you just need to give it a few swipes up and down to help that lubricate with all the little balls within the carriage. Once this is done, you can use a cloth or rag or something to remove some of the excess. Repeat this process so you have two identical, well lubricated linear rails. To assemble the linear rails onto the extrusion, first make sure that the hammer nuts are all aligned to the slot so that the linear rail can be placed onto the extrusion. Then place the alignment jigs on top, near the ends but avoiding the screws and then gently tighten the screws to hold the MGN rail in place. 
be careful not to over tighten the screws as this can slightly twist the rail and disrupt the smooth motion of the carriage. When all the when all the screws have been tightened and the hammer nuts are holding the rail in place, you can remove the alignment jig. Give the carriage a quick movement back and forwards just to make sure that it moves smoothly across the full length of the rail. You can also take this opportunity to remove any excess oil. Flip the extrusion over and repeat the process with the other linear rail on the other side of the extrusion. Connect the idler assembly to the top of the extrusion using two M5 by 16 mm screws. Flip the extrusion over so the back of the idler is facing upwards and slide the two end stops onto the extrusion. Tighten them into place near the top of the extrusion. The end stop with the thicker part nearer to the top or nearer to the idler assembly is the front and that's where we'll connect to the arm later on. The end stop with the thinner part near the top is the rear of the assembly and that's where we're going to connect our counterweight. To connect the base to the main extrusion, first place the trim piece over the end. Then using two M5 by 16 mm screws and two washers between the screw and the base plate, screw the base plate to the extrusion. Making sure to get the orientation of the idler and end stops correct relative to the orientation of the base plate. To connect the arm assembly to the linear rail on the front, First, place the belt onto the arm assembly, aligning it with the notches, but not over the hole. Then place the whole assembly onto the carriage. Use four M3 by eight millimeter screws to hold it in place. But when the screws are half tightened, add the trim plates onto each side and then fully tighten the screws to hold the trim plates and belt into place. To mount the counterweight holder, again you can lay down the whole assembly in order to make this job a little bit easier, align the belt with the grooves as before, place over the carriage and hold in place with four M3 by 8mm screws. Next we'll move on to installing the counterweight. If yours come in this protective packaging you will need to remove it first. It may be quite a tight fit so you can use something like an allen key just to force it out from the back with a little bit of care. The packaging in which the counterweights come are actually there to protect everything else in shipping rather than the counterweights and it doesn't matter if it gets damaged upon trying to remove the weights it is just to protect stuff during shipping. With the main counterweight released press it down into the top of the counterweight holder. It will be probably quite a tight fit, but it should just about squeeze in. Next, we need to assemble the shim holder. This is the adjustable part of the counterweight and uses a number of slim two millimeter steel shims. There's three different size pockets, which you can fill up a three, a two and two once for a total of up to seven counterweights. I'm installing all seven here to show you how they would go. But you may not need all of them and you may find over time that as the assembly loosens up a little bit you may want to remove one or two of these weights. With the shim stacker in place tighten all of the screws around the counterweight to hold everything securely in place. Lift the belt up and place it so it sits on top of the idlers centrally and runs smoothly across them. The penultimate step is to install the soldering iron and secure the cable. To do this firstly pull the soldering iron up into the grip. Then with the soldering iron at its lowest point, find a suitable place for the cable to sit, 
ensuring you still retain full motion of the soldering iron. Then, using three zip ties, hold the cable in place using the holes provided in the idler. Once held securely in place, simply trim the zip ties. For the final step, secure the idler cover in place with a single M3 by 8 mm screw. And there you have it, congratulations on the assembly of your VLMP Pro. You can now adjust the counterweight if you need to, or just go straight into using it.